You know, for a long time, the world has seen history through a very specific lens. This lens has shaped our understanding of the past, influencing how we perceive different cultures and civilizations. It's like those glasses your grandpa refuses to take off, even though they make everything look yellow. These glasses distort reality, making it hard to see the true colors and details of the world around us. That lens, my friends, is called Eurocentrism. It's a perspective that places Europe at the center of the world, often at the expense of other cultures and histories. It basically means that Europe is at the center of everything important, the main character in the story of humanity. This narrative has been perpetuated through maps, literature, and education systems. And guess what? Everyone else is just a side character. Non-European cultures are often portrayed as inferior or less significant, or their stories changed to fit a Eurocentric perspective, their contributions minimized or ignored. Now, this Eurocentric view has done some serious damage, especially when it comes to Africa. It has skewed our understanding of African history and culture, leading to widespread misconceptions. It's painted a picture of Africa as this dark continent, a place with no history, no culture, no achievements to speak of. This narrative has been used to justify colonialism and exploitation, just a blank slate waiting for Europeans to come and, you know, civilize it. This idea has been deeply ingrained in many people's minds, shaping their perceptions of Africa. But here's the thing, that's a big fat lie. Africa is far from a blank slate. It has a rich and vibrant history, full of incredible civilizations, innovations, and stories that deserve to be told. Africa has a rich and vibrant history, full of incredible civilizations, innovations, and stories that deserve to be told. From the ancient pyramids of Egypt to the scholarly centers of Timbuktu, Africa's contributions to human history are immense. But Eurocentrism has tried to erase all of that, to make us believe that Africa was nothing before colonialism. This erasure has had lasting impacts on how African history is taught and understood. And that, my friends, is a tragedy. It's a tragedy because it robs us of a complete understanding of our shared human history. It diminishes the achievements and resilience of African people. It's time to take off those old, yellowed glasses and see Africa for what it truly is. A continent bursting with history, culture and resilience. A place of innovation, creativity and enduring spirit. A continent that has been shaping the world for millennia, even if Eurocentrism has tried to hide it from us. From ancient trade routes that connected Africa to the rest of the world, to cultural exchanges that have enriched global heritage, Africa's influence is undeniable and profound. Let's talk about Kemet, later changed to Egypt by Europeans, shall we? This ancient land, with its rich history and cultural heritage, has fascinated people for centuries. The land of pharaohs, pyramids, and enough ancient wonders to make Indiana Jones jealous. From the towering pyramids of Giza to the enigmatic Sphinx, ancient Kemet's monuments are a testament to its grandeur. Even with the Eurocentric lens on, it's hard to deny that ancient Egypt was lit. The vibrant hieroglyphics and intricate artifacts tell stories of a civilization that was ahead of its time. But here's the thing. Eurocentrism has a funny way of dealing with things it can't erase. It often tries to rewrite history to fit its own narrative. It tries to separate them, to distance them from the narrative it's trying to control. This is evident in how Egypt has been portrayed in historical texts. And that's exactly what happened with Egypt. European scholars, back in the day, knew they couldn't just pretend Egypt didn't exist. The evidence of its greatness was too overwhelming. European scholars, back in the day, knew they couldn't just pretend Egypt didn't exist. The evidence was literally too big to ignore. The pyramids, the temples, the statues, all of it was too grand to be overlooked. I mean, have you seen the pyramids? Those things are huge. Their sheer size and the precision with which they were built are mind-boggling. So instead, they did something sneaky. They started to manipulate the narrative, subtly altering maps and documents. 
they started to draw a line in the sand, or should I say, the Sahara. This line was meant to create a division to separate Egypt from the rest of Africa. They started claiming that Egypt, while amazing, wasn't really a part of Africa. They emphasized its proximity to the Mediterranean and its connections to Europe. They talked about Egypt as if it was this separate entity, floating somewhere in the Mediterranean, closer to Europe, of course. This narrative was pushed to make Egypt seem less African. They emphasized its connections to Greece and Rome, while downplaying its African roots. This was a deliberate attempt to appropriate Egypt's achievements. It was a classic case of cultural appropriation, claiming the greatness of ancient Egypt while denying its African identity. This manipulation of history has had lasting impacts on how we perceive Egypt today. So, we've got Eurocentrism trying to erase Africa from the narrative of its own history, and then awkwardly trying to claim Egypt for itself, as if it were a European civilization. But how did this play out in the actual study of ancient Egypt? Well, that's where Egyptology comes in. Egyptology, the study of ancient Egyptian history, language, literature, religion, architecture and art, was heavily influenced by the biases of its early European practitioners. Now, on the surface, Egyptology seems pretty cool. You get to dig up tombs, decipher hieroglyphs, hang out with mummies. What's not to love? The allure of uncovering ancient secrets and the thrill of discovery are undeniable. But here's the problem. Early Egyptology was steeped in the same racial biases that fueled Eurocentrism. These biases shaped the questions that were asked, the interpretations that were made, and the conclusions that were drawn. The people who got to decide what was studied, how it was interpreted, and what stories were told were predominantly white Europeans. They held the power to shape the narrative, and often did so in ways that reflected their own prejudices and worldviews. And they weren't exactly rushing to embrace the idea of a powerful, advanced black civilization. The notion that a great civilization could have been built by Africans was something they were unwilling to accept. Instead of seeing ancient Egyptians as they were, Africans with a complex and diverse range of skin tones, they tried to make them fit into their pre-existing worldview. This often meant depicting them with more European features. They focused on statues with more European features, highlighting these as representative of the entire civilization, while ignoring the vast majority that clearly depicted African people. This selective representation skewed the perception of ancient Egypt's true diversity. They came up with wild theories about how ancient Egyptians were actually descended from lost white civilizations like Atlantis or some mystical Aryan race. These theories were not based on evidence, but on a desire to fit Egypt into a Eurocentric narrative. It was a deliberate attempt to write black people out of their own history, to deny them their rightful place as the architects of one of the world's greatest civilizations. This erasure had long-lasting effects on how ancient Egypt was perceived and studied. Recognizing and correcting these biases is crucial for a more accurate and inclusive understanding of ancient Egypt's rich and diverse history. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications.